as some music was playing there, I thought if the subject I'm going to speak on is the Holy Spirit tonight, and I was thinking that we need to go to the verse in Psalm 47, 5, where it says, God has gone up with a shout. The Lord, with the sound of the trumpet, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with his understanding. Our God is an awesome God. I, I guarantee you that. I cannot even comprehend everything that, that he does and, and that he sees. I'll get it right here in a minute. But anyhow, what I, want, what I want you to know is that when you come to a worship service, if you just sit down, still yourself and prepare yourself, and you allow the Holy Spirit to come to you, your worship will be much greater. And the Spirit of the living God who resides in you will rise up from within you. And you, you will be lifted to a new level. Now, that, that's, that's not easy for to understand, I know. And, and for years, it, it messed with my mind until God started to reveal some things in the Word. I struggled. Uh, I think Sally knew me when I was just a pup in the ministry. Yeah, pretty rough around the edges, wasn't I? That's a rat-haired terrier. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I was talking to Pastor Rob this week, and I found out you guys have been uh, doing a study on the gifting of the Spirit. And I kept looking at uh, the gifting of the Holy Spirit, and I kept thinking, well, man, that's, I'd have to do that five or six weeks to even start to cover it, and then I wouldn't do it justice. So I thought, well, I'll, 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 I think I'll go to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about the Spirit and the presence of the Spirit walking with us, and then I thought, that'll take five or six weeks. And I thought, well, this is where you led me, God, so this is where I'm going to be. I always appreciate talking about the Holy Spirit, because ever since my, my point of salvation, I don't know what I would have done without the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, when, you, when you talk about the Spirit living within you, and coming close and sitting with the Spirit, you're almost like talking FaceTime with God. Think about Moses. When God had to hide him in the cleft of the rock and let him see the, the backside. Think about the different time where the captain of the Lord's army appears. The captain of the Lord's army is who when he comes back in the skies in the book of Revelation? That's Jesus Christ. But it's all done in the spirit. It's all done in the spirit. That's where we captures our mind. If we look at, if we look at Joseph and we see that all the different dreams he was growing in each and every dream. His dream started out small with corn shocks bowing down to him and stars in the sky bowing down to him. And it ended up with saving, saving a nation of people and saving his own nation behind that. He had to grow into it, and we have to grow too. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, it's, there's a blessing that God tells the priest to give the people. And it's, the, ble the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and, and give you peace. Let me ask you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Wow. When is the last time where you were sitting, whether it's in this bench or out there somewhere at home in the backyard? What, do some of you got a prayer room? A place where you specially go to prayer? A prayer altar in your home? That you felt like the face of God shined upon you. Yeah. We need that. We live in a world that's tough. We live in a world that's hard. When we come away from our prayer time, we need to be in a place to where we feel that God has been with us. And over half, over half of that time, for me, a lot of times, is just sitting silent. Just sitting silent, maybe conversing back and a little forth a little bit. Just making little statements, little quirks. And then all of a sudden it just it wells into, into prayer in me. That's what solves problems. That's what changes people's lives. That's what changes the way we see our prayer time. 
That's what brings a value to it. I want to ask you, are being a host of the presence? Are you being a host of the presence? And I want to say, what, what, what is a host? Who, who stands on the... A host is someone who stands on, on the forefront. And they receive those entering into a place. A lot of times we have a host or a hostess at a restaurant. Then they take you and they seat you. Are you being a host to the presence of the Holy Spirit? A host can, can be also be a place where it hosts an event. You and I often say, and I've heard this, I will not judge another man until I've walked a mile in his shoes. How many has heard that statement? Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Most of you are right-handed. I know that. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you something different. Maybe we need to start to pray in our prayer time that God would not, that God would not judge us until we've allowed the Holy Spirit to walk in our shoes. Wow. What do you say to that? Because after the Holy Spirit's walked, after we've hosted Him, who has been imparted to us at the point of salvation, what really happens for you and I is we come to an altar and we repent and, and we, we, we say a, a sinner's prayer and, and we get saved and when we repent it says we turn and we go a new direction. I'm going to go this way or I'm going to go this way because I've been going the wrong direction all my life. And I'm going to look at things different. I'm going to get a different view. I'm going to change my view of things. And it's at that point that the Holy Spirit is indwelled within us. He walks within us. The Bible says we should, we should walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Let Him direct your steps. No matter which hallway you're in, let Him close the doors. Let Him open doors. So many times we as people, we want to grab that doorknob and... Well, the door must be swelled and stuck, you know? Or, go get the key. <laughs> I pray God would throw away the keys. I really pray that God would throw away the keys. We ought to live our lives as, as a phrase I ran onto not too long ago called Coram Deo. And someone to, to ask you, uh, why are you doing things the way you're doing them? Why are you acting the way you act? If you're living according to Coram Deo, you say, I'm living my entire life in the presence of God. I'm living my entire life under the authority of God. And I'm living my entire life to the glory of God. Walking in the Spirit. That's what I'm all about. Because I realize God created me to bring glory to his name in whatever position I'm in. You know, Solomon, in the end of his life, he looks in chapter 8 of Ecclesiastes, and he says, I see, uh, I see wicked men getting the reward of riches and rich men not getting the reward. They're getting the reward of wicked. And, and, and he says it's all vanity. All through the book, it's all vanity. Because we're not viewing things the way God views them. When I first went into ministry, I didn't have the fullness of this view. And my wife and I look at our, our lives now and we view ourselves as being so rich. We are so rich by the people we've been around, the people we've got to know, uh, the, the events we've been able to participate in and be a part of. And it's all because we've listened to the leading of the Holy Spirit. My friends, at times, I've been taking places I wouldn't have normally went as a person. I preached in one place for a, year, a couple of years for free. We never took no money, no nothing. They were broken people. I preached at one church for seven years exactly to the day, and they said, we're going to give you $400 a month, and we don't even know if we can pay you. And we moved. Gave up this job and moved there and settled in there, and she traveled to her work, and I got another job, and we worked. And I wouldn't have chose that. When we went to meet them, we're sitting there, and we had set something in our mind. This is the way it's going to be, and this is what needs to happen. And when we got there, we're sitting at the table, and all of a sudden across from me, the other people are, and I'm looking over there, and 
And God says, you're to come. You are to be here. And it was nothing like we had talked. And I said, we'll come. We will come. We get the car to come. She says, what about what we talked about? <laughs> I don't know if I told her you got outvoted or not. She got outvoted by a vote of one. The Holy Spirit speaking. We as a people often, we don't ju we need to allow the Holy Spirit to so take take a place in our life that that he is the forerunner of us. Now what I want you to understand is Jesus was fully God. But when Jesus came here on earth, he was fully man. And if you read the book of Luke and you read it slowly and you read it again and you read it again and you read it again, you'll come to a full understanding that Jesus did everything through the power of the Holy Spirit. He defines that well there. Jesus laid down his godhood to take on our manhood and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit every day. And oftentimes you found him in some garden or some quiet place at night praying all night long so God could show him who to pick his disciples, so God could show him the next direction to go, so God could lead him to this person, so he would know what somebody would say. The difference between having the Holy Spirit within you and not, or, or, or having the Holy Spirit be silent within you and having the Holy Spirit allowed to speak openly and you listening is this. I look at you and I see each of your faces on the outside. But for a lot of you, I look at you and I see what's underneath. Okay? I see the hurt. I see the pain. I see the joy. I see uh, the greatness that's there. I see talent. I see gifting. There's a big difference between talent and gifting, my friends. We need to realize that. Jesus calls us to obedience. In John 14, verse 15, through 18, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give another helper that, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Do we hear that? He will be in you. I'm going to give you another comfort. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He says in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And I'm going to come to you in another form. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Holy Spirit. He's not an it. It's, it's He. He's an active ingredient in our lives who is a person walking with us every step of the way. And we do things we would not do because He is with us and He directs us to do them things. There's just enough of you here tonight. I preached a funeral with one person there. Okay? And I've preached to churches where there was only six that I went in. None of that bothers me. What bothers me is not being able to really bring the word. That bothers me. I know what it's about. Every single person is important. Jesus knew how hard it would be. And, and he had suffered in so many ways. We had this suffering servant in Jesus who was walking by the power of the Spirit. He knew what it was like to, to feel the heat of, and the sweat on his face and the dust to rise up and mix with the sweat. He knew what it was to lay in a garden and pray and say, I don't want this thing. I don't want to have to face this. And we end up that way too with the death of our loved ones and the sickness and the grief and, and all the stuff that happens, our financial burdens. We lay before God and we say, I don't want to face this. But we need to come to a place where, where in the spirit of the living God, he says, get up. Do my will. And we say, okay. Not my will, but yours. If you remember on that night when he was laying in the garden before that, he knew who would betray him. He knew they would leave him. He washed their feet and said, I'm serving you. You serve others.
he also calls our helper, our comforter, our advocate, a spirit of truth. There's so many things we can, we can read the scriptures 20 times, but until the spirit comes and enlightens us, we don't know the fullness of the truth of the, of the word. And there's some things you're never going to understand. I don't, I don't necessarily understand everything. I don't know how they can be three in one and be one. Okay? I don't know that. But I don't know in a whole lot of other things, too. But they be. They're happening. They're there. And I cannot deny them. Only a fool would deny them. It says the spirit of truth is for the believer. The spirit of truth is for the believer. Only the believer can comprehend that, you know, I've turned my life over to Jesus Christ and, and this, I feel this driving force from within and it drives me to certain places and it takes me on my journeys and, and I need to follow him in every way and I, and I do and, and things start to happen and, and I'm not sure how it's all coming to pass but it comes. We just went through some instances within our church and I think Marilyn and Joyce would both confirm the timing on them was so exact, was it not? Every, they're shaking their head yes. Please shake your head less. <laughs> no, they're shaking their head yes. Because we said about it, the timing of everything hit. Bang, 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 bang. It just fought, fell in line. Everything, everything fell out in place. It didn't always feel perfect. There was complications. We had to, we had to do course corrections. We did our course corrections. You're in a building project. You didn't get through this thing without course corrections, folks. Uh, and you didn't get through it without while you're here. The while you're here is, is Jesus saying, well, while you're on this road and this journey, we might as well fix this thing that's in you. This thing called fear? Yeah, you might as well conquer this fear in you. Because fear is of the devil. How many of us act like the Holy Spirit's living within us? Abiding within us. You? When you get up in the morning, you know, you jump out of bed and you throw your shoes on. Of course, I don't jump out of bed anymore. I pull myself up. Okay? And yeah. Then I go and I get dressed and everything else. But do you really start to act like from the moment you awake and get up like that? Okay, I have the spirit of the living God living within me. I have the spirit of God living within me. I am so blessed by God himself because he is here. And when I go today, no matter what I face, even if it's death, he will be right there with me. And when I take my last breath here and my first breath there, he will still be there with me. He will not leave. He's there forever. That's what it said in that scripture. We quite often, I find Christians treating the statement of the, the Holy Spirit abiding in them with mere lip service or, yeah, 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 oh, okay, whatever. We don't, we don't dwell on it in our mind. We don't dwell on it when we read the scriptures. Maybe, maybe you ought to take out of your paycheck and go buy a whole bunch of yellow highlighter pens and have them read that New Testament. And every place that they, they read, they need to highlight that in yellow. Next time I come back, we'll, we'll get pink highlighters and we'll do another subject. Okay? Yeah. You'd be surprised how many times God talked to you about His Spirit indwelling in you and you walking in that Spirit and you changing the world that you're in. In Galatians 5.16 it says, But I say, walk in the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desires against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. The Apostle Paul said it best when he said, The things that I would do, I, that I, I do not. And the things I would not do, that I do. That's what he said. We need to walk with the living Spirit of God within us. I cannot repeat it enough. Tonight's so much not about me, my friends. It's so much about you. When you accept Jesus Christ, when you repent, when you become an heir of God, 
you are given, you are graced with the grace to walk in, in the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 3, 5, it says, which in other generations have, was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. Revealed in the Spirit. In other words, there's things being revealed all the time by the Holy Spirit to people. People in generations. And in this particular time, it's saying, to be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So through the gospel, we, we're the Gentiles, folks. We're not the Jewish nation. We are Gentiles, and we are fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. We are fellow heirs with the Messianic Jews. We are fellow heirs with all believers. We become children of God, and he grants us the same thing he has granted his son. The Holy Spirit, it says in the word, is given as a pledge. And a pledge is like a down payment of our inheritance. What do you give as a pledge? They instructed you in the Bible that when, when, when let's say I would come to one of you and say, I know you, Tracy. I need some money. Come on up here and give me some money, okay? And I, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a pledge. Here's a set of keys, my car keys. In the Bible, it, it also said you couldn't take a man's cloak Okay, or his coat, you couldn't you couldn't <coughs> cripple him to the point that he couldn't pay back his his pledge. You follow me? We we are given the Holy Spirit as a pledge. It's like a down payment. This is a down payment of what we are going to receive over here. A pledge from God is the Holy Spirit in us. And we need to know that. Ephesians 1.14 says, Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with the view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of His glory. This is still about His glory. When we walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit, He gives us and empowers us to bring glory to His name. We were created to bring glory to His name. So He can look out and say, Look at that one. I can imagine me. Yeah. Well, I'm sure glad He didn't look at me when I was younger ago. No. Because <laughs> I was bad. I was no good. But now, maybe maybe once in a while I get an attaboy, okay? In Luke 4, 14, it says, As Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout all the surrounding district. And in Acts 10, 37 and 38, it says, You yourself, knowing the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee after the baptism, which John proclaimed, You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For well, God was with him. And God is with us. We are the children. We are the sheep of his pasture. In 1039 it says, We are witnesses of all the things that he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And he also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. We're almost there, buddy. Don't worry. Preach. We'll be there by the time the sun comes up. you got lights. <laughs> Luke 6, 19. And all the people were trying to touch him, for power was coming from him and healing him and healing them all. He was healing all of them. They, they just wanted to touch him. That power is there. And it's, if I touch him, it is eminent that I will be healed. I will be. But it got to the point where they wanted to heal him. They didn't necessarily want the healer. The throngs of people wanted to lay their hands upon him. You serve my purpose. I don't want to be everything I can be or all I can be in you. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. He is treasured. He is this treasured gift from heaven. You know what grieves the Holy Spirit? Can anybody tell me what grieves the Holy Spirit? Disobey him. Huh? When you disobey him. Sin. When we disobey. Yeah. 
Yes. You need to lose your use your outside voice with Rob when you talk to me. I'm slow of hearing. Yeah. Such a meek wife. How could you ever complain, my brother? Yeah, we should never grieve the Holy Spirit. When we sin, we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we break the laws of God, we, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine? How about your parents? How many, how many of you were parents? Some of you are parents. And how many, how many you were all children? And all of a sudden, your, your father looks at me and he, at you and he says, I'm disappointed in you. I'm hurt by you. I didn't think you would do this, son. My dad said that to me a time or two. That hurt worse than, than other, any other punishment. Right at the moment. That really hurt. It stung. I disappointed my father. When we grieve the Holy Spirit and we sin, we disappoint Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's ten commandments. We can't even get through the first ten commandments, let alone the 631 laws written in the book of the New Testament. And they're all there today. We need grace. We need to be graced with the Holy Spirit to walk out in this world and to serve. We need to serve in a power that is given in truth that can only be given in Him. Because when my first reading of the Bible, I didn't comprehend everything that I read. In John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. And He will not speak on His own initiative. But whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will disclose to you what is to come? The Holy Spirit, my friends, if I were to say anything else, is the dynamite of your lives. Without the Holy Spirit, I would never have been in all the places I've been. I would never have done all the things I've done. I would have never been given all the opportunities I had because I would have failed so utterly. Because so often, when I heard something, I said, no, 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 I, I, I don't. that's not it. And I sat there, and I sat there, and finally God says, he starts to point things out through Holy Spirit. It's almost as if there's an argument going on inside of me. And the argument's really not, I'm not going to give the devil all the credit for it. The argument is not Satan. You know who the argument is? It's between me and Holy Spirit. And when I say, whatever you will, I'm going to do it. I will do it. Okay? I will do it. Whatever your will. I go to a new place. I touch a people I probably would not have passed by. Maybe I wouldn't even wanted to pass by them. I, 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 I intervene in things that I would not even get involved in. Okay? And I'm taken to a new height. Now, God is starting to spritz on this bald head of mine. And I didn't put much armor on tonight, but it will beat. That's how you treat leather. So I'm going to close for you. But we could talk for six weeks on this, folks. I want you to go home and ask the Holy Spirit how he, he can use you. And I want you to start to say yes. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I just... Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to be here to bless these people, to touch them. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>